Join me and come and learn the stitch repeat for this oh-so-dreamy cardigan in Paintbox Chenille. It's gorgeous. Let's have a look at this gorgeous cardigan. This is the oh-so-dreamy cardi and it truly, truly is. It's made from Paintbox Chenille, which is the softest, plushiest, squidgiest, oh, it's lovely yarn, um, that's great for babies, for baby blankets, for toys and plushies, um, but also very lovely to make a cosy jumper and uh, or in this case a lovely cardigan. Um, the oh so dreamy cardi comes in two lengths. This is the short length and there is a really long sort of cotigan almost which is really fun. It's chunky weight yarn so it will knit up super fast. This um, is knitted on a six millimeter needle and I just want to um, say to you, although it looks complicated because it's all stripy and different stitches, actually, it's just knit and purl. It's very simple to do. It would be a really great first garment. It's fun to knit with chenille. The only thing that you need to watch out is that you make sure that when you cast on or you cast off, you do it loosely because there's not giving it like there would be for a woolly cuff. This chenille is made from 100% polyester, so it's great if you um, are sensitive to animal fibres or lanolin or vegan. And, well, it's just, you can't stop squishing it, it's lovely. So let's show you just here the balloon sleeve, such a nice shaped sleeve. And this is achieved by working the cuff, just this part here, which is in a rib, on a 4.5 millimeter needle and then there's some increases here and then we go up to a six millimeter needle and that creates this kind of really lovely open stitches that you see here. I really can't begin to tell you how super, oh you can see my hands, I'm everywhere aren't I? It's so soft and beautiful. So here we have three colors of this lovely paint box chenille. This is sugar violet, peony and sky and there are 16 shades um, it's super, super soft. I absolutely love it. But you can put together, for these cardigans, this Oh So Dreamy Cardi, you can pick colours that you like to make it um, out of those 16. You don't have to stick to what's in the pattern, but if you do, that's also lovely. The pattern is a free pattern. All paint box patterns are free patterns and it's downloadable. I'm putting the link in the description. So let's get started and we'll cast on. Should we cast on with the peony? Because that's very lovely, isn't it? Nice peony pink. So one of the things I said to you in, in the intro just there was you need to be quite um, loose when you cast on with chenille. And this is because it's a, it's a fabric without a lot of give in it. I'm going to cast on on my thumb. You can cast on any way you choose. Um, but notice I'm just going to be very gentle the way I pull the yarn. So if you're one of those people who really pulls their yarn tightly, like my mother, for example, uh, you need to be very loose with this. Um, so I'm just going to cast on 20 stitches, but just see I'm doing it really, really loosely. Try to be nice and loose when you do it. If you find that you really are someone who can't be loose, go up a needle size is, is the best way to make sure you've got a looser cast on. But I promise if you cast on with something that's really tight, it'll be hard to get your wrists in to the sleeve ends and things like that. So be mindful of that. Let's have a look now. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And also, there is no, um, I think the, the first size of this cardigan is about a 53 stitch cast on for the back. Because it's a chunky yarn, there's not, there's not huge numbers involved, which is quite nice. There's nothing worse than a 300 stitch cast on. I've cast on the right number of stitches, and then the first two rows are knit and purl. So we're going to start off with a little refresher. So knit, we put our needle into the stitch underneath, bring the yarn around and then under and off. Into the stitch, bring the yarn around, under 
and off. In, around, under, and off. And notice that I am doing this gently. I'm not pulling the yarn tightly at all. And that's important, not just with the cast on, but with chenille in general. Um, some chenilles can shed a bit, luckily not the paintbox chenille. So I'm going to work my way around down to the end of the row. Let's just do that one more time together. In, around, under and off. In, around, under and off. And don't be afraid to use your fingers on your left hand. So I've got my thumb here, I'm putting the yarn it needle in. I'm actually holding these needles with my left hand here. Bring the yarn around and then I'm using my left finger here just to push that needle backwards and help it go under and off. So you don't have to do it, you know, you can do it as slow as you like, take your time, but that is a refresher of the knit stitch. Now I'm going to turn around onto the wrong side of this particular pattern and we're going to work a purl row. So to work a purl row, if you remember, we put the needle, instead of the needle going this way for a knit stitch, we're going to bring the needle up into the stitch. So up into the stitch, I always like to then secure my needles with my left thumb and then bring your yarn around the top of the, uh, the needle, then pull it down, under and off. So it goes up the stitch, note my thumb there, bring the yarn around the top, under and off. Let's try that one again. Up around, under and off, up, around, under and off. And I'm just going to work the rest of the row here. So stockinette or stocking stitch is where we work one row of knit and one row of purl alternately. And this creates the fabric of a lot of this cardigan is created in stock and stitch in blocks of stripes of stocking stitch and knit. So let's come along to the end of the row and then we'll have a little look. Now, one of the things about chenille is that because it's such a big, plumpy, lovely yarn, it can be hard to see your stitches. And as if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I talk a lot about being able to read your knitting and look at your knitting. And I want to just show you, in chenille, because it's so plumpy and fluffy, sometimes it's hard to see. But if I just pull it apart here, you can see there is a little V here for a knit stitch. Can you see those little Vs? And then on the wrong side, you have got your little pearl bumps. So you always know which side you're on. Now I'm going to work two more rows and then I'm going to meet you back here for our next section. So the next part, there's our little two inches of stocking stitch and then we're going to work four rows of the knit stitch. So we're going to knit as we did before across this row and then you'll see what happens because we're going to work four rows of knit garter stitch and you'll see that we get that really great ridge that we get between the colours on this cardigan, which is such a nice design feature. And actually, that's something you could use if you were just making a scarf and you wanted just uh, to keep it completely flat. You could work some stocking stitch, stockinette, and then a little bit of a garter ridge for those of you who like to just create it. So that was the knit row. Now. The second row of this section is also knit. So even though we're on the pearl side, we're going to knit there. And what happens now is that you will see the ridge of pearl bumps come up on the front of the pattern. I'm doing this hurriedly 
just so I can show you what comes up. And so we work four rows of knit stitch, garter stitch. And as you can see, when I turn around, look at what's happened. We've got a row of the bumps. And I'm just going to grab the cardigan to show you. This is what I'm talking about. When you work the stockinette and then four rows of rib, stockinette, four rows of rib, and this is the theme throughout this cardigan, is that there are four rows of rib in between or next to the colour changes, uh, which is a really nice sort of break in the stocking stitch. So now I'm going to work another two rows of knit and then change colour. So I am going to meet you after this next row of knit. Now you can see that with the four rows of knit stitch has given us that lovely break with the little bumps all the way across. So we've got a bit of stockinette or stocking stitch, four rows of knit and now we're going to change colour. And if I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this lovely sky colour here because I think that's very lovely. Now when you change colour, ordinarily there are lots of lovely ways that you can change colour and weave the end of the new colour in along these top stitches at the back. In this particular example, I'm not going to suggest you do that because it's very bulky, sort of chunky yarn. You can end up with a with the yarn showing through or the chenille because it's quite gappy with this six millimetres or it can just be a bit bulky. So this is how we change colour. Just take a loop of your new colour, ready, put the needle into the first stitch and then you're going to put your loop over the top and then pull through, under and off and then put your needle into the next stitch. Now, to work the next stitch, use the long strand, the one the working yarn, the one that's connected to the ball. Try not to use the tail because that's not going to get you very far. So take the long strand, bring it around, under and off. And then we've knitted another stitch and we've changed over to this new colour. Now when you've done a few stitches, and I'm just knitting here, as that's the pattern. What I suggest you do is then snip, leaving a long tail, snip the pink chenille there. Now because this is the sort of yarn that sort of, you know, is quite fluffy and, and plumpy, I'm actually going to just tie that in a knot, two knots gently, don't pull it too hard. And then when we come to sew up, just going to weave these ends into the colour section that they belong to. Weave that one into here and this one a bit further up. And that means that it's not going to show through the colour that it doesn't belong to. And this is just, there are so many different ways to change colour, but for this particular cardi, that's the way I'm going to do it. So we carry on. And this is our next stockinette, stocking stitch section. So I'm going to knit this row. Let's just do a little recap in, around, under and off. In, around, under and off. You take your time with these rows, I'm, I'm knitting an angle here. So that's the first row of the new colour. And that's quite nicely secured because we put a little knot in there. And then I'm going to turn around. And then because we're on a stockinette, stocking stitch row, and the size of these where the knit breaks come in and the colour changes. That's all in the pattern. And remember, it's a, a free pattern that you can download from the description. 
this is a purl row. So remember, I'm going to put my needle up into the stitch. So remember for knit, it's this way. For purl, it's this way, up into the stitch. Bring your yarn around the top, down and off. So needle up into the stitch, around, down and off. And can you see I'm using my thumb here on the left hand to help with just steadying those needles. I suggest you use wooden needles or bamboo when you're knitting with chenille because it's quite a slippery little yarn or plastic even. But maybe, well, whatever you've got. But if you were going to buy some needles, um, I would avoid metal with these. Um, I mean, it'll be perfectly right with metal, but it just might be harder if you're not used to knitting it. And then I'm going to work that pearl all the way down. And remember, there's 16 shades you can choose from to create your own Oh So Dreamy Cardi, um, which is just heavenly, heavenly soft. There we go. So you can see that colour change looking really pretty there with the sky next to the peony pink. And then I'm going to work another couple of rows of stockinette and then we're going to change over to this sugar violet. So I shall see you in the next two rows. So now what I've done is I've worked the four rows of stocking stitch or stockinette here and then four rows of knit stitch, garter stitch, which has created another one of those nice ridges. And you can see how that keeps the stocking nice and straight and not curly. So that is a really good thing if you're going to make a scarf, just as an aside. So we're going to change over, change our colour to this lovely sugar violet. And as we did before, we make a loop out of the new colour, whatever it may be. Take your needle, put the needle into the first stitch there and then pop that loop and leave a nice long tail on that because it's something we've got to sew in later. Put that over the needle and then just pull it through and off like you're knitting it. Should we do that again? Just to show you. Pop that back on there, that stitch. So we take a loop, we're just going to do it again so you can see that again because it's quite a, a nice little transition. Put the needle in, put the loop over the needle and then we just pull under and off. And that's the first stitch. Then pop the needle into the next stitch, take the longer working yarn, the one that's attached to the ball, not this little short tail because that won't knit you very far. Long one. Bring the yarn around the needle and then under and off. Into the stitch, around the needle, under and off. So then we're back into the stocking stitch, stockinette section of the Oh So Dreamy cardigan. And this is how you end up with such lovely colour changes. They're nice and neat. They all come, you know, they're not complicated. They come at the beginnings of rows. And don't forget to leave yourself a nice long tail. So I'm now going to trim off the sky. Again, leaving a nice long tail. And the reason I say that is because you don't want to end up sewing an end in and then it poking out somewhere further down the line. So let's work three rows or four rows of stocking stitch or stockinette, which means we are knitting on the right side and purling on the wrong side. So that's our first row of knit. Let's turn around and do some purling. So you can see the pearl in that lovely sugar violet. Gorgeous colour, isn't it? So we turn it round. And also these nice 
colour change ends are all sitting right on one side. So remember for purl, we put the needle up into the stitch, yarn around, down and off, up, around, under and off. And so you work your purl stitches along the purl side and four or six rows of stocking stitch, you need to just follow the pattern to see how many rows of each colour you work. I shall see you here in about three rows time. Right, so here we have that lovely sugar violet section, the same thing, four rows of stocking stitch or stockinette and four rows of just garter stitch, knit stitch, which has just given us that lovely ridge. Now remember when we change colour before, what I suggested to do was to just tie the two colours into a knot. So I'm going to do that now, just gently tie the ends into a knot just to secure them. And now I'm just going to have a little look at sewing those ends in to make them invisible. So I'm just going to turn this work around to show you here. So the best way to sew in these ends is to sew them into the section of yarn they belong to, which means that they will be as invisible as possible. So let's have a look here at this little bit of sky. To thread a needle, I've got a big tapestry needle here. I'm just going to fold the yarn in half over the needle, slide it out and then just shimmy it through the hole. Very nice way of threading a yarn that's big. So you just fold it over the needle, pinch it and then just shimmy it in and pull it through. So the best way to sew this in is just to wiggle it in and out of the blue. Um, and I'm taking it, you can see, in and out of both sides of that, the, the knit and the pearl bit of stitch, because I want it to be secure. So when you've taken it a two or three stitches in, just sewing around in and out so that you hide it nicely in there, go back the other way and go a slightly different route. Than you've, than you've been, if you know what I mean. And this will make sure that that won't come undone. And just take it in and out a little bit. And then when you've done that, snip it off. And that just means that it's, it's not super pretty, but it doesn't pop out that side. So if I take this time the peony I'm avoiding that peony a bit because it's quite a bright colour on the camera here. But do the same thing. Just weave the yarn in and out. Now the core of chenille yarn is like a sort of a strand and often you'll see that appearing. I might do in a minute with this. So weave it one way there you can see the little core of the yarn appearing there. And then just go back another way so that you absolutely bury it in. And once you've done that, it's nice and fast and it won't come out, trim it off. And so that doesn't show from the front at all where you wove it in, um, but it's nice and secure. So, that is how you knit the pattern for the Oh So Dreamy cardigan. It's super light, it's super fun to knit, and you can choose all your own colours from those 16 gorgeous shades, paintbox chenille. So that's how you knit 
the stockinette and garter stitch ridge repeat in the oh so dreamy cardigan i'd love to know which colors you're going to choose there are 16 to choose from in the paintbox chenille range and don't forget subscribe to the channel for lots more tips and techniques and leave me a comment and tell me how you've done happy knitting <laughs>